Saxony's capital, Dresden, is famous for its historic city center, but Saxony has recently become infamous as a hotbed of xenophobia in Germany. I'll be talking about that with Dresden's mayor, Dirk Hilbert. Welcome, Mr. Hilbert. Hello. Thank you for joining us on the DW interview. I'm Thomas Spahn. Mr. Hilbert, refugees have been harassed on the bus. Residents applaud when refugee hostels go up in flames. And every Monday, xenophobes gather in the middle of Dresden. You're from Saxony yourself. You must find this shameful. I'm married to a foreigner, a Korean woman. So the situation we're faced with is very difficult for me. The image our city is presenting is anything but the image I would like it to, especially because Dresden has grown in very positive ways in the 25 years since the fall of communism. It has drawn people who work in the arts and sciences and people who work for international companies. So this is very painful for us. You're personally affected because your wife is a foreigner. Have you and she experienced any hostility? Luckily, not yet. My wife told me about one incident that's really kind of about the irony of fate. Another foreigner gave her sort of a bad time, but otherwise nothing's happened, thankfully. But the xenophobes are now taking action in the neighborhood where you live. There are citizens' initiatives against foreigners there. Aren't you worried for your wife's safety? It does make you a bit nervous, and that's what we see in general in the city. People who have come here from all over the world, who feel completely at home here, and it is a beautiful city where you can live and work quite well, are suddenly afraid when they leave their homes. And that is something that we simply cannot allow. You were elected last summer by a wide majority. Are most Dresdeners liberal and open-minded? I think so, yes. But there's also the other Dresden, which is associated with the name Pegida, the patriotic Europeans against the Islamization of the West. They hold anti-foreigner demonstrations every Monday. Do a majority of Dresden residents secretly support this activity? No, their appeal is limited. They ran their own candidate for mayor, and she only got 9.6% of the vote. I think that's the maximum support that really exists for Pegida in our city. But we see that Dresden presents a stage that is used not only by local residents, but also by others who come here from the rest of the country. We've seen that a lot of people come to the Pegida demonstrations from the Czech Republic, which is right next door. And that development scares me. Images from the demonstrations, like an effigy of Chancellor Merkel hanging from a noose, have made the news around the world. Who are the Pegida supporters? Are they all right-wing extremists? Several studies indicate that this has less to do with right-wing extremists, who would presumably be simpler to deal with. We're mostly dealing with what are called concerned citizens. The studies indicate that they represent a broad spectrum of society. They tend to have an average income or even an above average income. There are self-employed people, occasionally a master craftsman, and people from the intelligentsia. They tend to be male and middle-aged or older. There are certainly young people from the surrounding region, but fewer from the city of Dresden itself. But we do have to address the question of what attracts people to this group. But where does this hatred come from? In the eastern German states, immigrants make up maybe an average of 2% of the population. I wouldn't describe it as hatred. First of all, fear plays a role in urban society. And if you're not used to being around foreigners, you may be afraid of them. 
As you just said, there are very few of them in the eastern states. In Dresden, there were maybe 4% before the wave of refugees came. If all of a sudden a large number of immigrants arrive and the local residents aren't used to being around foreigners, that can cause fear. And we have to address that. Each Monday there are Pegida demonstrations, but also counter-demonstrations. You've been talking to both sides. What do you hope to achieve? I would like to reunite our city. That's my declared goal. We cannot allow things to continue as they have over the past few months. We've seen the rise of an anti-Pegida movement. That's happened in other cities too. I believe that we have to engage in dialogue. I'm working with church leaders to invite people to forums for dialogue on the serious issues that we face today. Previous forums have drawn between 500 and 1,000 people. You want to encourage dialogue, even with Pegida supporters. But in some cases, you've been shouted down. How can you make your case under such conditions? I've never been shouted down. Occasionally, someone will interrupt, and I'll think to myself, people are pretty upset here. But at the last event, in early February, citizens expressed their opinions, and they did it in a very civilized way. I think it was a much more effective dialogue than we'd seen at previous forums. People are listening to each other more closely, and that's a very important point. People have got to start talking to each other again. Your state premier and others say that this phenomenon is not limited to Saxony. It exists across Germany. You've been accused of contributing to the escalation by playing down the developments in Saxony. Your response? I wouldn't say it was played down, but in retrospect, it's possible that if an effective stance had been taken against Pegida a year ago, when it was just getting started, it might not have become so popular. So Pegida is active in Dresden to a greater extent than they are in other cities. The political elites decided not to pay attention to them. But they got a lot of attention anyway. Pegida holds rallies every Monday. You could stop that by banning demonstrations, but you don't want to. Is that tolerating the intolerant? If there were a legal basis for banning those demonstrations, I would. But there isn't. We have the right to freedom of opinion and freedom of assembly. Those are valuable rights, and they are protected by the Constitution. So I will not interfere. It would just give Pegida something else to complain about. Also, I think the political elite interprets the law as it will, and I won't do that. I have to deal with this situation openly, and society does too. We have to work hard to continue the dialogue, calm people's fears, and get them to talk to each other. It's not easy, but it's the only option we have. Otherwise, it'll be swept under the rug, and then it'll all just flare up again. Pegida complains that the borders are still open and refugees are still arriving. What's your opinion? Do we need to limit the numbers of refugees? I think there will have to be a limit to the number of refugees, because otherwise the local governments and the entire national system will be overwhelmed. Not in terms of providing shelter. I think that's still the easiest challenge. But in terms of successfully integrating these people, if our own society, our own people, are not with us, it won't be possible to do any effective work on integration. 
I think there has to be a counterbalance, and it will come. Now we can start discussing how Germany will manage this. I think there's still plenty of room for more, despite everything. When you took office, you promised that Dresden would be a model for integration, is it? We do need to work on that urgently. I think Dresden is a model city when it comes to housing. Two-thirds of the refugees have been housed in apartments, decentralized. Right now we have more refugees in language courses than in nearly any other city or region. The head of social affairs recently said to me when I suggested more projects, I don't have any more refugees, they're all busy. Of around 5,000 refugees, some 4,500 are taking language courses. So we're really setting an example. And for months we've been discussing the issues of integration. We work with business leaders, so I think we're not doing so badly. Mr. Hilbert, we always end our interview with three incomplete sentences that we'd like you to finish. Other mayors in Germany have stepped down because of xenophobia. I stay in office because... I owe it to the voters to complete my term, and Dresden needs a mayor who will reunite the city. I'm the one to do it. To Begida supporters, I'd say... They're at a dead end. It's been more than a year, and we've seen that the solutions can't be found on the streets. For my son Lukas's future, I would like Dresden to be open-minded, tolerant, and welcoming to immigrants. Dirk Hilbert, thank you for joining us. You're welcome.